Getting the right spoke length is really important. So what I'm going to show you here is how to measure up the hubs and the rims uh, so that you can get the right measurements to put into a spoke calculator online or you can uh, do it yourself manually using trigonometry. So I'll also show you that formula as well. So let's look at working our spoke lengths. You're going to need a few uh, different numbers to work that out, whether you use a calculator online or you do it manually using the trigonometry formula. So we're going to look at how to measure the rims are, work out what the ERD is, what the ERD is, um, measure the hubs up, and from that we'll be able to work out what the right spoke lengths are for a wheel. So you'll often hear different expressions when it comes to wheel building, and one of them that gets touted around quite a bit is ERD, or effective rim diameter. Now you might think that that's got something to do with the rim diameter, like round the outside of it or round the inside of it here, but it's not. It's actually buried somewhere in between, in there. And what it actually is, is it's the point where the spoke gets to the very top of the nipple, and that's the perfect length for the spokes to be. So that's where you want all of the tops of the spokes to end when, it, when it's finally up to tension. Basically like this. The things you're going to need to work out the ERD, uh, the rim you're going to use, uh, the nipples you're going to use, uh, something to screw into the back of the nipple, so like I use a matchstick, but you know you can get one of those old spokes and you couldn't remember what box it went back in and just chop the end off that and screw that into it. And you're going to need a ruler or a vernier gauge. Now preferably a vernier gauge because it's more accurate and it's easier to measure it with that, but a ruler will do the job, especially if you've got good eyes. Oh yeah, you're also going to need a tape measure. Let's have a look at how to measure up the components of a wheel so that we can work out the spoke sizes. So the first thing we're going to need is the rim. So we've got the rim here, and we're going to be measuring from here to here. So basically the diameter. And we're going to measure that in more than one place and then take the average of it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get our tape measure and we're going to measure the diameter of this rim. So straight across, it is 595 in that spot. Now I'll take it in another spot. So we'll go here and there it's 595 as well. Now, if it was different lengths, what you do is just take the, uh, the average of that and then work that, use that as your measurement. So the next thing we're going to do is get our nipple and measure with a vernier gauge. You can do this with a ruler as well, um, but obviously a vernier gauge is more accurate. So that's 12 mil. So we're going to get the nipple and I just get a match and screw it in to the back of it like that. But you could also use an old spoke, one of those ones you're going to throw in the bin because you couldn't work out what box it was going to go back into. Didn't know what size it was. You can see I've made myself a little tool just out of an old spoke, just cut it down and made it into a ring, screwed it into the back. We're going to get our uh, nipples on a match, or a little spoke tool you made. And we're just going to measure that with a vernier. We're going to measure how far it protrudes out of the rim. So that protrudes six mil. We'll give that 6.03, that's just six mil. You only have to do this in one place. Now we've worked out the inside diameter of the rim and the protrusion of the nipple. So basically the ERD is the inside diameter of the rim plus two times the amount of nipple left in the rim. So in this instance, because the nipples were 12 mil long and we had six mil sticking out, we, had, we still have six mil inside the rim. So we multiply that by two because there's one on each side and that's 12. And we add that to our 595, which will give us 607. The next thing you're gonna do is get the hub that you're gonna use. So we got a hub here. And what we need to do is get the rim into the middle of these two end points, the basically the two points that are touching the outside of the frame. So the end of the lock nuts here. You can see from this hub here that we've got the you know, room for the cassette, so it's gonna be dished. So the actual flanges are offset from the center. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna work out how far this flange here is from the end nut where it touches the frame and how far this flange here is from the end nut. Because it's a dish wheel, we're gonna to have to use different spoke lengths to pull the rim into the middle of these two outer points here. So we need to find how far off the center of the hub we're gonna do that. So by knowing that that's 130 in this example, because it's a road hub, and then measuring how far that is from there, we subtract that amount from half of the whole axle width. And that'll give us our offset of the flange from the center of the hub. When measuring the offset of the flange from the center of the hub, you're always measuring from the center of the flange. So right in the middle of there, not from one side or the other, but right in the middle. Now, most of the time, these flanges will be the same size, but there are manufacturers out there, like Hope, for example, that use different flange sizes on their rear wheels. So you should check both flanges and not just assume that they're gonna be the same size. 
The next thing we need to know is the radius of the spoke hole centers. So basically from one side here, the, the middle of a hole there, and to the middle of the one opposing it, what that distance is. And the final thing we're gonna measure is how big the actual hole is where the spoke comes out of. So we need to know what the internal diameter of that is. The only other thing we need to know is how many spoke holes there are. So we need to do that for each flange. So, because sometimes, again, you get hubs which have got more uh, spoke holes in one side, so they take more spokes than they do in the other. And you sometimes get that with uh, wheels, that, like a rear wheel on the dish side, you'll get more spokes. And often it's kind of like twice as many. So you might have 12 on the drive side and six on the uh, non-drive side. The last thing we're gonna need to put into our formula, whether that be manual by doing the trig ourselves or to put into a spoke calculator online, is the amount of crosses the spokes make over each other on their way from the hub to the rim. Now the most common way in a standard wheel is three cross. So this is a three cross wheel here and you'll just see this outboard spoke here that's coming out of the hub. That's going over this spoke here. That's traveling over this spoke here and then it's going underneath this one here. Now we've taken all our measurements, we can put them into a, a spike calculator online, or we can just put them into the formula, which I'm just about to show you. So you can do it yourself if you want to do it manually. I've always found that the spoke calculators can be a little bit out one way or the other, but you know, if, you've, um, if you keep a spoke diary and you know what combinations go with what, often you can work out which way it is. So, you know, you might need to just take two mil off or you know, out of the calculation that the spoke calculator gives you. The only real way to get it right is to do the trig. Remember those words back in math at school? When am I gonna use this in my adult life? I'm not gonna use this in my life. Well, guess what? Now you are, and for a good cause. So even if you weren't that good at school or even didn't do trigonometry, you don't really need to understand it to be able to work out spoke lengths using the formula manually. All you're really doing is inputting data into a formula that's already there. And it's basically working out from all the other things, what one thing is left to work out, and that's the spoke length. With the numbers we're putting in into the equation, it's working out the angles, the length of the other sides, so that we can work out what the last side of the triangle is. Okay, so in our equation, the capital R stands for the rim radius. So basically we're measuring what the ERD is and then just halving that to give us the radius. The capital H is like the capital R. It's basically the radius of the hub hole diameter. So basically when you've measured across the flange from one hole to another, half of that measurement. The capital F stands for the flange offset. So how far the flange is from the center of the hub on either side. So to work out the flange offset, from the middle of the hub, what we do is we measure the um, over lock nut distance and then we take half of that. So in this instance, where we've used a road hub and it's 130, the full axle length, it's gonna be 65. And then we measure from the center of the flange to the lock nut and we subtract that number from the 65 and that'll give us our answer. The X is for how many crosses the spokes have. So what pattern that is. Now, if you have the wheel where you've uh, done one cross pattern on one side, and you're doing a different cross pattern on the other side, you'll have to input this data separately. The little h is for how many spokes are in the actual wheel. Whichever side you're trying to work out, you need to double that amount. So if the wheel's got 18 spokes in it and 12 are on one side and six on the other, when you're trying to work out the drive side with the 12 spokes, you don't want to put 18 into the equation. You want to put 24. And on the same on the other side, you don't want to put six into the equation, you want to put 12. The small d in the equation is the inside diameter of the spoke holes in the hub.
So with the power of the internet, we don't have to go out and buy ourselves a scientific calculator like the good old days. You can just type into Google, scientific calculator. There'll be one right there on the screen. One final thing on working out your spoke lengths when building a dish wheel is a lot of the calculations and the online calculators will give you roughly a two mil difference from the dish side to the non-dish side. Now my advice to you, with my experience, is to not do that. I would always do them one mil apart. Something like a Hope Hub might have a larger flange size on the drive side than the non-drive side and they really do need to be two mil apart because you won't get the tension right if you, um, if you do set it at one mil. When the wheels went to nine speed, for the extra space they needed for the cassettes, the dishing went from down from two mil, so a two mil difference from the right hand side to the left hand side in a rear wheel, to one mil. If you build a modern wheel that's nine speed or onwards with a two mil difference, what you'll find is that the left hand side is actually quite loose. That you might find that the actual spokes start to undo themselves. Okay, so this little video is showing you how to measure up uh, rims and hubs so you can work out what spoke lengths you want. You'll find that sometimes when you use the spoke calculators they don't even have the actual resource to, uh, for a particular hub or a particular rim. So you're gonna need to measure them yourself at some point. Now you know how to measure up your rims and your hubs so you can work out what spoke lengths you need. I hope this is very helpful and makes it much easier for you to build your wheels in the future. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe, share it with your friends, and check out my other videos for more pro tips. Take care of yourself and get out there and ride your bike. Bye for now.